Hovering on the edges, the kestrel in my head melts into a brightness, becomes a vivid wood. Detailed to the leaf veins, quivering with growth, hallowed out of harvest, echoing with truth. Vibrant to the axles, shimmering beyond, melting and condensing into a bracken frond. The leaf becomes a feather, the twig becomes a bone, and frond returns to Kestrel. She flies me deeper home. She flies me deeper home, from summer to the cold. Veins leach into sky, chlorophyll a cloud. Hyphy nudge beneath, connect a world of worm, feel from root to root, billow into form, flare in whirls of gills, dazzle to revolve, pledge their spores to air, burgeon and evolve, drift down with the leaf, like condensing breath, settling in a dew that brings the sky to earth. She brings the sky to earth, inters me with the mould, until I meet with truth, a melting down of mind. And now I am a web, a texture of the soil, a layer soaked with silt, hardened into shale, clenched within the dark, Divested of form, a word that cannot speak, cradled into doom. And pressed between my leaves the life that fell unlived, deprived of wind and light, a feather fossilised. A feather fossilised will find a bird of shale, aloft amid the stone, with eyes the sheen of steel, whose cry could split a crag, whose claw could rend the earth, whose force could fill the egg that splits a nightmare forth. And out into the night she bursts a screeching shell, a rendering of flesh, a kestrel forged of soil. A kestrel forged of soil takes umber from the earth. Her pinions bathed in ochre, a bill of chert for wrath. Her tail tips of obsidian, of flint her eyes are struck. Dismemberment her gaze, her clasp a choking torque. I may be prey and pellet, a fleeting splash of lime, where wind has killed the willow, her perch a naked limb. This terror is the gift her talons gouge in me, that tells me in a blinking the instant I must flee, her hovering a mime my rustling barely heard, and so we weave awake the dance of hunt and hide. The dance of hunt and hide enacts itself in fears that shimmer in the eyes of mice through battlements of furs. For fear is light that trembles a metabolic pulse teetering between pure dread and reflexes of praise. The slitted pupil of a fox from a spinny stares, her pounce an ecstasy of fright, a smooring out of stars. And beaded eye of mouse and stoat meet coldly to agree that one day all that flees must live, 
another be set free by canines piercing gentle throats, by talon hooks locked down, by bills that spill their clots of blood upon the snow of dawn. So terror leaves less evidence than quivers of a leaf, and death may come more swift than sleep, more fleet of foot than life. More fleet of foot than life, my scent is all but gone, my spore lies under snow, the hunt is upside down. The hunter turns the tail, the quarry gives the chase, breath is on a precipice, death is stalking close. I shrink from what is known to seek the way of winter and stir the growing dark as otters slink through water. My hide as sleek as seaweed, my eye as salt as brine, as slippery as elvers, the stone where I'm reborn. The stone where I'm reborn will stand until the doom, dark sarsen of the sun, too tangible to dream. I clutched its coolness closer, roots drew up from earth, a spectre of the hoarfrost to haunt its granite girth. Through the summer swelter, a monolith of cold, as though the smith forged adamant, or petrified a cloud. Moss was in its cup marks, a mould grew from its breath, skeleton and earthworm, a heaving into birth. Long away I lie, my declination north, tilting to the shadow, cast by knowing death. Cast by knowing death, out, off, down, away, wrecked, unravelled, exorcised, twisted, half awry. I never know how death might sculpt of me a form, gild as under fungus, divided as a fern, or spread as splay of feathers on disembodied wing, or forge of me a fossil when the breath is wrung. I doubt that death is glory. I know that she is kind. I wonder how she'll throw me, reconstitute my mind. It might be under leaf mould. It may be in the smoke. I've no way of caring what sweet death may make. What sweet death may make, a breath dispersed to sky, a flutter in the firmament that sets a leaf asway, a richness in the roots of trees, a berry on a yew, a gleam of phosphorus in fish, to wake a seagull's yaw. A darker place upon a stair, a linger by a gate, inside a drawer, a curl of hair, a coolness at the grate, a shudder under summer sun, a kindling in winter, a stir as when an insect's legs splay on skin of water. It seems I float there every night, incapable of words, weightless as a spider casts her filament to winds. Her filament to winds, her spinnerets let fly. She kedges me to firmament, whispers me away. So I, a weightless spiderling at stratospheric height, gaze downward from infinity upon a groundless naught. 
Should I come to earth again, whom moonlight led astray, wind may whisk me over land or cast me into sea, where brine will fill my spiracles or slacken me in death or make of me a brittle star to span stupendous depth. To span stupendous depths of soul, of sky, of well, I poise my trembling person to pray, to fly, to fall, to plummet into nowhere, to find by aid of dark, the space between the synapse, the word before the spark, till consciousness turns luminous as lights above the fen, prevaricate with being, flitter and are gone. So all is heedless heeding, a noticing of naught, a waft of noiseless feathers, a wind that makes no draught. And plunging, I am seeking a senselessness that touches, a nothingness of night birds hovering on the edges.